2 Corinthians 11, 1 through 4 says this. Oh, that you would bear with me a little folly. Paul says this is, I'm going I'm to get a little stupid because I'm seeing stupidity or dumbness around me in the church. I'm seeing us to allow, to allow things to where we serve a holy God. And if we're going to draw near to him, then what's on the inside of us should be changing us to look more like him. So God says, so God's saying there should be a fire on the inside of our hearts that is changing us. See, when the word goes forth, it'll bring forth a purification and a change. And Jesus even recognized that this purification or change was stronger than miracles could, could sustain. Meaning that Jesus got very upset with the people that didn't repent. When you go through the Gospels, there's a time where he's going over the cities and he's saying, whoa, Chorazin, whoa, Tyree. Because if you had seen all of these mighty works, then if these other nations had seen them at the time, they would have repented. Meaning that when Jesus was here, there were mighty signs and wonders and miracles, but the signs, wonders, and miracles didn't necessarily bring a person to repentance. See, when the true word of God penetrates, then it'll bring a heart to a place of decision. And now is the point of what will you do with that decision? The Holy Spirit is working on us as a people to hear him so that we can bring a, a word in season for those that are weary, those that may be in sin, those that may be hurting. And when the word has fire, then it will convict hearts to bring change. So we see that Jesus the Christ came into a place to demonstrate the power of God and to help the situation because the Bible says that the Son of Man came going about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So he came full of the fire, full of the power of God, and the power of God changed things. Just as last week we spoke that if he is in your boat, you're going to the other side, and on the other side, there are going to be people that are oppressed of, of the enemy. There are going to be people full of the devil. But the thing about it is, is that the Christ has the power on the inside of him to change their situation no matter what they're going through. But sometimes it just takes a simple word that brings forth change. We don't see mighty signs and wonders being talked about in John the Baptist, but the word was so pure and so clean that it brought people to a place of repentance because they recognized God is speaking to me. And sometimes we have to be on our couch, at the house, in the church, over our friend's house, where when the word of God comes pure and confronts us with things that are on the inside of our heart, when the word of God is saying you got to stop lying, when the word of God is saying you got to stop fornicating, when the word of God is saying you got to stop this sin, that it's like we have to recognize this is the word of God speaking to me, and because he's speaking to me, now I'm in a place where I have to demonstrate I hear him, and how I demonstrate that is I change my behavior. Jonah, in one instance, even in the midst of his disobedience, when God spit him out of the whale or the fish and put him into a place of Nineveh and he spoke forth the word of God, even the Ninevites who were considered the most ungodly, the most full of sin people, when they saw this and heard the word of the Lord, they got into such a place of repentance that they even had their dogs put on sackcloth and ashes, that there was a repentance that happened in the city. No sign, no wonder, but the word of God, the word of God bore witness with what was in their hearts saying, I'm doing wrong. Because don't you know, when you're right in the midst of getting ready to do wrong or right after it, there's something on the inside that says, I shouldn't have did that. Don't do this. And what happens? If right before, when we're getting ready to get right into the midst of our sin, when there's a warning that shoots up, what do we do? We override that because we do what we want to do. And here the Ninevites were set into a place because the word of God had come forth because they had did what they wanted to do and they recognized that it was not holy. So they heard the word of the Lord and they chose to repent. And what did it do? It turned God from bringing destruction in. So Paul says, let me give you a little bit of folly. For I am jealous 
for you with the godly jealousy. For I betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste version to Christ. So what does he say? He's saying that my job, my duty is to help to present you to Christ as a holy wife, as a holy bride. Does not the word in Ephesians say that he's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle? And so he says, Paul says there's a godly jealousy on the inside. See, on the inside of me, there's a godly jealousy for the people of God to wake up and to allow the purifying work of God to dry sin out because we are being presented to a holy king. And verse 3 says, but I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. He says, this is not a hard message. And I'm fearing that the devil has tricked you into you believing that you can get away with all of these things and still be right in your relationship with God. You see, it's not the fact that there's sin. Because all of us have areas of weakness that the enemy has been working in. But what we have to recognize is there's a standard. And when Christ died for us, he placed on the inside of us the spirit of God to help us to untangle us from these things of sin. And give us power to overcome the things that are trying to hold us down. And so he said, there's a simplicity within the gospel that all he wants to do is to have a strong relationship with him. And in that strong relationship with him, you will fear him and you will hate evil. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil in the dishonest way. So on the inside, there's a rising up that God wants to do to be able to help us to overcome the traits of sin and the characteristics. And this is what shows us when we have a relationship with Christ that there's a change in our hearts. People are transformed because the fire of God comes in and it purifies our heart and it brings us to a place of change. And now he can use us because we don't look the same way that we looked before. And you can see it in the newest of believers. When somebody gets gets dynamic, dynamically, drastically changed by God. They go out the very next day and the drug dealer that was dealing drugs who had a radical conversion with Christ, all of a sudden his homies are like, what's wrong with you, man? There's something different about you. Because the spirit of God is now dwelling on the inside of that vessel. And we have to recognize this is a work of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have to make sure that the Spirit of God is leading us in our endeavors as we push to, to bring increase to the kingdom of God. So many of us want things to look good on the outside. And we're doing all of these different things, but we're doing it to brag up and boast upon ourselves. This ministry led this many people to the Lord and had this many healings and this many salvations. There's nothing wrong with that, but what we want to make sure is, is that the Lord is doing the work and that the increase is coming to the kingdom. Because if not, all we're doing is we're creating people that are walking around in a religious state. And whenever they are put to the test, they're going to be like Cain and their sinful nature is going to come out. Religion will make you hateful and spew out wickedness. But relationship with God will cause you to draw close to him and will cause you to have a love for the people of God. The Spirit of God wants to do a special work on the inside of his people. You have to recognize in Jesus, in John chapter 4, when he had the encounter with the woman of the well, the Spirit was driving him that way. Why? Because there was a whole region in Samaria that needed to hear the gospel. And so Jesus found one strategic woman who was in sin. And when he pointed out his sin by the word of the Lord, the Holy Spirit was reading her mail saying, you did this, you did that, you did this, you did that. And immediately she recognized, she said, are you a prophet? She recognized the word of God was coming to her. And when she recognized the word of God was coming to her, what happened? Change. Whenever the true word of God comes forth, change should happen on the inside of us. And so the word of God came to this woman and change happened. And so what happened? There was such a word on the inside of her that she went to the whole town 
telling them about this man. And why did they come to see this man? Because they recognized change in the woman. This woman that was out in the middle of the day that everybody knew was in relationship after relationship after relationship was now in a new relationship. But this relationship was with the king of kings. And they wanted to know what happened to this woman. This woman changed and they all came to meet him for themselves. And see, this is the problem that we have in the church because when we don't have a true encounter with him, we'll bring something that's false. So Paul says, I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I betrothed you to one husband that I may present you to a chaste version to Christ. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Keep your relationship with him simple. Spend time with him. Worship him. Praise him. Romans 12 says, that by the mercies of God, we present our bodies as living sacrifices, wholly acceptable to him, which is our reasonable service. So he says, by lifting up holy hands, by praying, by worshiping, by getting into the word, simple. Getting into our hearts. It's more than singing a pretty song. I can come up here all day and sing, but if my heart's not in it, if my heart's not after God, if by opening up my Bible, I'm just doing it as a duty, then my heart's not in it. It's a religious front. And what happens? Now I get mad because I see somebody that's really going after God strong, and I see that fire, I see that passion, and what I do is I begin to try and murder them. I begin to point out all of their faults and weaknesses. I may not physically murder them, but with my words, with my thoughts, there's hate and different things on the inside of my heart. Versus when there's pure praise, when there's pure worship, when there's a pure going after God, then no matter what others are doing, I'm still operating towards them in love. So Paul says it's the simplest of the gospel in 1 Corinthians 11.3. Verse 4, he says, For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit, which you have not received, or a dis different gospel, which you have not accepted, they may well put up with it. And this goes to the very front of what happened with Cain. He received another gospel. He brought to God the leftovers, hoping that God would accept it, but God rejected it, saying he wanted a simple relationship with Cain. If we are not careful, we'll find ourselves preaching another Jesus, a sweet Jesus that's going to take us all to heaven because of love. Yes, Jesus loves us. He's going to take us to heaven, but he's not acceptable of all the junk that we've been bringing in. And that's why when God was dealing with them that were dealing with the strange fire, he said, recognize that I'm holy. Recognize that I'm true. Otherwise, you'll create a whole nother Jesus. Just like this Caesarea Borgia. Borgia. This guy that homosexual didn't look like the people of God created. What do we do when we create another Jesus? What? We create this Jesus that tolerates all of the things that God hates. God is a holy God. And he doesn't want us to put up this false image of him that pushes people away. People will come in droves if they can compromise and still be who they are without the change. And this was Cain's problem. He wanted to present something to God and still be who he was. And God, on the other, other side of it, wants us to come to him so that he can show us who we are in him. You were created to be holy. You were created to be a king. You were created not to try and cause others to conform to be like you. 
what happened? Cain was upset with Abel because Abel was willing to do things God's way. And so he, he tried to change Abel, and when Abel was doing things the right way, the indignation on the inside of Cain rose up and killed him. Why? Because there's a system within this world. And this world system wants us to conform to it. So instead of being like Christ, which is what the word of God is trying to do on the inside of us, we bring the standard down in the church and we put up with this, 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 which we know doesn't line up with the word of God. And God is saying, I want to do a work on the inside of my people so that they recognize in me there's only one form of acceptable worship. When Jesus ran into the woman, the Bible says this, that the Father is seeking true worshipers to worship him in spirit and truth. A true worshiper is not trying to do it his way. A true worshiper is not allowing the world to conform it to look like them. So what? We keep bringing the standard down to look a little bit more like the world. Our praise and worship has become concerts. The skirts have just been getting a little bit shorter. Now we allow a little bit of homosexuality over here. Now we allow, and, and the reason why we do that is because the person behind the pulpit is, is allowing a little bit of fornication to be in his life. So we can't speak against this because there's junk on the inside. The Holy Spirit wants us to come into a place where we recognize that he's holy. And when he's holy, then there's a standard that we're looking at, and we allow that mirror of the word to get on the inside of us, and it helps us to be holy. It's not that God is bringing us into this place where we're all going to be perfect. We will not be perfect until we are changed and we look like him. But the thing about it is, is that the Holy Spirit wants us to be in a place where our relationship is so close with him that our actions and our words line up with who he is. And when he comes to deal with us in areas of our heart that we don't act like Cain and think that it's okay and allow sin to take over. When the Spirit of God is dealing with us in areas of our heart, that's our opportunity to say, yes, Lord. I recognize that. I'm struggling with that, God. God, help me. Because that on the inside of me doesn't look like you. And you are holy. And I want to draw close to you, God. So I'm going to ask you to burn, to allow your fire to come in and burn that out of me. Otherwise, I will be like Nahab and Abihu, and I will bring strange fire and present it before the Lord as worship. God wants us to be in a place where our worship goes with him, goes up before him as pure, and he accepts it and releases his fire and brings change into our hearts. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you desire truth in our inward parts. Lord, we ask that you would help us to be in that place where our hearts are positioned right before you, God. Lord, that strange fire would not come out of us, God, but that there would be a purity, a holiness, God. Lord, that we would be like the priest, that your fire has burned and touched our hearts, Lord, and we will do everything within our power to keep that fire going. Lord, we repent for prayerlessness. We repent, God, for not being true worshipers or true praisers, God. Father, we ask you to burn a fresh passion in us like we had, that we would not lose our first love, Lord, but we would be hungry, and that we would seek you first in all your righteousness, God. Father, we magnify you for who you are. You may be in that place, and maybe you feel like You've gotten far from God, and you are putting on an act. But if the Holy Spirit is ministering to you, and his word is bringing you into a place of conviction, saying, that needs to change. Then just allow the simplicity of this word to get into your heart 
and to speak to your life and to recognize whatever area it is and let the Lord know, God, I'm sorry. I repent. I turn from that sin. Help to give me the ability to overcome that on the inside of my life. All you have to do is place that thing on the altar that's holding you back from him. And he'll get you right back in place. And when he gets you right back in place, the conviction of the Lord will be there to help to change you so that you look more like him. Father, we thank you. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.